Welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join us on the banks of the beautiful River Severn at Atrium. You join me this evening on the bank with my uncle Azza and Gary Williams and Mitzi's along with us as well. So hopefully between us we can put some barbel on the bank. Today is the limb barbel fishing and driving down the M56 and the M53 like you've seen at the start of the video you see that beautiful scenery. We sat and listened to the adventures of Chris Ponsford and all the journeys he's been on through his fishing career starting off in match fishing and all the way through to see the journey of an all-rounder through sponsorships and things like that it was a really interesting talk so as you can see behind me there's plenty of wind on the venue so apologies for any wind noise on the vlog but we'll do our best to keep it to a minimum I do hope you enjoy this video and if you do please leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel so let's take a look at the setup, the baits, and how we're going to approach the swim. Regulars to the channel will know I'm a great fan of hemp, and with barbel, I don't think you can feed too much. So in there, we've got plenty of the Hinders hemp. You see there, nice big bucket. And I'm hoping that we'll be feeding most of this during the session. That is mainly going to go through the ground bait and also on the catapult on the inside line. So let's get some of that bait in now. So rod wise, I've got a pair of the 1.75 pound test curve Excalibur rods from Cordon. On there, I've got a 12 pound barbel line, and that is one of the Zelos reels. And down to the business end, got that bolt and run kit, the feeder, which is only one end, so you're not putting loads of ground bait out. And that's down to a 10 pound hook link and that banded pellet on that strong size 14 hook. That's the setup. The rods are out. And now, just a case of keeping on casting, remaining confident. You've got to put the bait in and hope that your effort is rewarded with a barbel. So from a bait point of view, for the feeder, we've got some of the Hinders Barbel Bond ground bait. And in there, I've just cut up some of the luncheon meat, just to add that variety of sizes of bait and the smells going through the swim. The river is low and clear, so yeah, you want that variety of food sizes to attract the fish in, and obviously the colour that that will give. In the feeder, we're going to be putting the hemp, obviously, some of the small ellipse pellets, We've got some of the big ellipse pellets for the hook that you'll see in a minute. And then if we want to try a bigger bait, we've got some boilies as well. So that's the bait, along with the hemp that we're going to be using today, that hopefully we'll see us get a barbel on the bank. So as you can see here, set up on a nice open peg. Enough room for three of us to fish. We're joined by Gary, my uncle Az and Mitzi. And then turning around, we've got the barbel rods out. I'm going to be fishing more in that direction, just to give plenty of room for everybody and looking at the swim there's two areas of the swim we're going to target we're going to feed this inside line here heavy with hemp and then we're going to be going across the river three quarters of the way over one thing that's quite apparent early on is a lot of this weed coming down the river and it's pulling the rods out of position so it could be one of those sessions where there's going to be a lot of casting and resetting the rigs which is always good you know when I'm barbel fishing do like to be active so it'll make me cast even more but yeah initially in the first half an hour just seeing a lot of that coming on the rods so there's my uncle with the first fish of the session they say great being by the bank with a bunch of mates he's had that on a worm it's a lovely fish look at the colors on it let's get it straight back and see if we can get another so my uncle aka the predator king I just had the second fish of the session, ate a fan of pike, so I said I'd hold it for him, it being such a monster, he wanted to make sure his hands were okay, but what a beautiful looking pike, hooked it in the lip, 
and yeah on a worm but it just shows what a beautiful little pike that is and the perch whisperer strikes again perch number two and lovely colours look at it and he doesn't fish the feeder very often as you know he's a stick float man but he's bagging up on these perch by the end of it he's probably gonna have a 20 pound pike <laughs> So just coming up to quarter past seven, you can see the sun just going down over the hills. Nothing else to report. That wind is getting up and the conditions have been really good, to be honest with you. Overcast and just kept on casting and putting that hemp in. You can see down there, just kept on periodically putting that hemp in and keeping the rod going in. And hopefully in the next hour or two, we'll start to see some of those tips bouncing over and the barb will come in so as you can see the sun's just gone down over the horizon and that left hand rod I've been feeding that hemp and on that small little banded pellet the rod's just hooped over so as a proper take the rod hooped over and that reel just started spinning he's holding bottom but it's just good to be on the banks of the river seven with a couple of mates and a bend in the thing with barbel if you are new to it, it doesn't matter, big or small, when you get them close in, they always go on that last run. The most important thing, as always, is give the fish a good rest, you know, this time of year, and make sure that they're ready to be blogged. So that fish is in the net. Haven't taken a look at it yet. I'm just going to give it a good rest till it's kicking. We'll get it out, take a look. What a lovely start to the session. It's taken till about half past seven um, for the first bite and my uncle's just commented just what beautiful colours it is and yeah it's a beautiful example of a barbel ripped off on that inside rod and reward for all that hemp we've been putting in and keeping on casting hopefully there's one or two more to come as we move into dark just before dark i'm going to put a good bed of the hemp out obviously it's a lot easier to put out when you can see where it's going so yeah, just on the edge of dark, I'm going to put some of that hemp out over the inside rod. So just coming up to nine o'clock and I had a lost fish on the inside rod that was only on for a couple of seconds. And the far bank rod just pulled over and a very jagged fight across the river. You can see it's dark, it's got an isotope just bent over and a bend in the rod. Let's see if we can get him in. The second barbell of the session, what, probably seven pound maybe, something like that. Bigger than the first. And coming on that far bank rod, around about nine o'clock. They say we lost one on the inside. It was on probably five or ten seconds. So yeah, good to get a few bites. The second barbell on the bank. Let's get the rod back out. And hopefully, we can get one or two more. Gary on the top rod, sat with Mitzi, has just come and said he's going to try this. It looks like it's from World War One. It's got more rust than the bike that I had as a kid. So he's just going to cut some of this up and give it a go. The bank with two mates, and um, we've been thinking of some punchlines. The best one we can come up with is lunch and fish. It really is the dog's pollocks. So, <laughs> so leave a comment down below the best one you can come up with and let me say if it works you're going to struggle to find a tin because it went out of production long ago so yeah Gary's casting this out now and we'll keep you updated but leave that comment down below of the best punchline you can come up with for this unique product so the far bank rod just gone again and just a gentle pull over, like none of the bites have really been tearing away really. But yeah, just coming up to 10 o'clock now and the third bite of the session. So always the wrong thing to say, but it does feel like a better fish. 
it's just holding in the middle of the river and you can see it's hard to see in the dark but there's a, a healthy bend in the rod but like all barbel you'll probably get it in and it'll be about three pound and make a, a fool of me you win some and you lose some it did feel like a decent fish and just getting it into the edge here didn't see the fish and the hooks pulled you win some and you lose some but that's what keeps you coming back isn't it time and time again no time to dwell on it let's get the rod back out there and see if we can get another far bank line has most definitely been the most productive this evening and yeah it's good to get a few fish on the bank and always good to see mr chubb so we won't keep him out too long and we'll get it straight back so just coming up to quarter to 12 and eventually that inside rod has gone on that banded pellet and long hook link just kept on casting firing a bit of hemp over the top every now and again you just gotta hope that we get this one in what a lovely fish coming on that inside line just going over eight pound a lovely chunky fish and yeah keeping on baiting that inside line paid off good fight you know i had a long hook link on and that small size 14 hook so yeah it's always a good battle the only downside with barbel fishing is a lot of them do come in the dark i'd love to see this fish in the daylight it's got some lovely colors so right on last knockings it's about five past one and we're just wrapping in and the left hand rod just on the inside has gone again it's been an enjoyable evening just on the bank with two mates and then just to finish it off hopefully we can get this one in it is something beautiful about playing barbel in the dark you just don't know where they are and all your senses are kind of lost with knowing where the fish is and this one's just holding out in the middle what a lovely way to end the session it's been an enjoyable evening on the bank that talk earlier on and spending the evening with two good friends it's been really enjoyable plenty of laughs and yeah what a lovely way to end it but i will probably what, about eight pound and a nice fight on that rod i want to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing it'd be great if you could like and subscribe to the channel and until next week tight lines and i'll catch you all next week tight lines